I'm going to stick my neck out here and say that glottal fry or vocal fry has a detrimental effect in terms of other people's perception of you. As we will discuss in this video, there are physiological advantages to using fry, and it is in fact a vocal register of its own. But for now, I want you to learn how to stop using glottal fry and improve your professional voice. In recent years, glottal fry has gained notoriety for its association with young women trying to sound more authoritative in the workplace. However, studies have shown that the use of glottal fry can have negative implications on a woman's professional image and career achievement. In this video, I will explore the effects of glottal fry and provide some tips on how to use it in moderation. I'd love you to subscribe. In fact, I urge you to subscribe, like, and comment. It really helps me choose the topics and have a conversation with you. It's really important. So please do like, comment, subscribe, etc. So glottal fry, more commonly known, actually so well known that I couldn't write this keyword as vocal fry or creak is a speaking pattern characterized by low creaky and drawn out voice rather like that. While it is the natural part of speech and can be used to emphasize points or add a conversational tone, glottal fry is often associated with a lack of confidence and competence. Hi, I'm Jimmy Callan, speaking coach, and I help people who aren't comfortable in their voice find the confidence to deliver their message with authenticity. So studies have found that both male and female listeners perceive glottal fry as less trustworthy and competent. Women who use glottal fry in the workplace are seen as less capable and reliable than their male counterparts. Additionally, job interviewees who use glottal fry are less likely to be heard than those who speak in a more traditional tone. The reason for these negative associations with glottal fry is that it is seen as a way of trying to sound more authoritative without actually having the necessary skills or knowledge. So employees may view women who use glottal fry as lacking in self-esteem, which can be seen as a weakness in a professional setting. While glottal fry can have negative implications, it is important to remember that it is a natural part of speech and can be used in a positive manner. For example, glottal fry can be used to encourage more chest resonance, which is a lower, deeper tone to the voice. Women tend to speak in their head voice, which can result in a higher pitch that may not convey the authority or confidence. Using glottal fry as a technique can help to add depth, authority to the voice, but it should be used in moderation. Here are some do's and don'ts when it comes to using glottal fry. Some do's. Be mindful of the potential negative connotations of using vocal fry. Use glottal fry in moderation. Use glottal fry to try and add depth and authority to the voice. Consider working with a voice coach, moi, to learn to use vocal fry effectively. And don'ts. Do not overuse glottal fry. Use it as a substitute for actual knowledge or skills. Use glottal fry in a professional setting where it may be perceived as unprofessional or lacking in confidence. So in conclusion, glottal fry can have both positive and negative implications on a woman's professional image and career advancement. While it can be used to add depth and authority to the voice, it should be used in moderation and with caution. Women should be mindful of the potential negative connotations of using glottal fry and consider whether it is appropriate in a professional setting. Ultimately, it is important to use glottal fry in a way that conveys confidence and competence rather than as a way of compensating for a lack of these qualities. So just quickly to recap, number one, glottal fry is a speaking pattern characterized by low, creaky and drawn out voice. Number two, it is associated with a lack of confidence and competence and can have negative implications on a woman or man's professional image and career advancement. Number three is while it can be used to add depth and authority to the voice, it should be used in moderation and with caution. Number four, women, particularly should be mindful of the potential negative connotations of using glottal fry and consider whether it is appropriate in a professional setting. Number five, to use glottal fry effectively, women may consider taking voice lessons to learn how to use it in a way that conveys confidence and competence. And don't forget, glottal fry or creak or vocal fry is a fantastic way to come out of glottal fry, your lowest register, into chest resonance to find a much lower 
more deeper sounding voice. I'm really hoping that that resonated with you, excuse the pun. If you're somebody that suffers from vocal fry or you're not even aware that you're using it in your own voice in, in social situations or indeed professional situations, then please do get in contact. I can help you with that. I can help you explore different registers, different dynamics and pitch ranges of your voice and help you come across more effectively. Speak soon.